it seems that because elections are coming in Zimbabwe, all this, all these people are looking for a certain narrative and they're selling a narrative. Now, we don't know who's causing this narrative to be sold. We don't know who's buying people around the way. We don't know if they bribed. But there's possibilities. And we're looking into that as who's running this narrative behind this, this uh, campaign that Sol and the Sentry are running. You know, it's funny. I'll put it like this to you. I first met the representative of the Sentry. Uh, his name was, I can't quite remember his name now, but um, I'll get back to you on the name. But he came into my office in quite an interesting way. It's interesting, I got a ra nice movie on this guy. He comes in and he says, you know, the Sentry is an institution that was established by George Clooney. And I'm here on the Sentry's behalf. Indirectly saying to me, it's authorized by George Clooney. Can you believe this guy? Comes on, and then he talks about state capture. He talks about lots of things in terms of um, in, uh, uh, lots of problems that Africa has in general. And I said to him, listen, I've been looking at the century now. I don't understand why it is the only writing predominantly about Africans in Africa. Is there like a specific reason for that? He says, no, it just happens to be that way. I said, all right, fine, I understand. I said, have you been to Zimbabwe lately? He says, no. I wonder if Sam Saul's been to Zimbabwe. Everybody's having this opinion about Zimbabwe. I've been there. I go there every week. I have businesses there. I have relationships with people there. It's a fantastic country. Don't let people fool you. You need to go and see this country. It's abundant in natural resources. It has huge human capital and intellect from its, from its people. And it has a certain way about the people that's amazing. They've got fearing. They are so, so educated. What Mugabe has done in the past, which has been amazing, and so has it kept continued in the current regime, is to continuously educate its people at a level that's amazing. And I think that's a big differentiator for us in southern africa where zimbabweans are really when you look at how zimbabweans work in other parts of the world they're amazing they're exceeding expectations they work hard they never complain they put the hours in and they add great value to your businesses i mean you guys know i found it very odd very few south africans won't have a zimbabwean person working for them somewhere in their home or in their business and i can tell you nine out of ten times those people are going to talk highly about those people working there now, that doesn't underestimate what resources we have in South Africa. We're here. We're a lot of people. We're doing our best under the circumstances. But I don't want to get political in this discussion. This is about the media and this ridiculous article today. Well, now, I read the whole article. And I just want to stress this point. Not at one point as the sentry and neither Ama Bungani being able to, or News24, who runs Ama Bungani's little statements all the time. And I just want to stop and pause for a moment to say I don't understand that relationship listed company, big players behind it, some guy there, Adrian Basson, running the uh, uh, stories of uh, Amma Bungani and Sam Saul. We need to understand that relationship more carefully and then put resources into it. We're also going to allocate resources to investigate how that system runs and let the public understand how media actually work behind the scenes. But coming back to your question about Zimbabwe, yes, I have relationships with many Zimbabweans. I have relationships and friendships with a lot of people in Zimbabwe, which, which included the president, the vice president, certain members <coughs> and ministers, and all the people on the ground. And until now, nobody can ever show that I have received or my family has received any benefit, zero, around Zimbabwe or around my relationships with any of these people. Okay, I have never benefited in any mining perspective, financially or otherwise, insofar as my relationships are concerned. There are many South African businessmen that have relationships with the president. And not now, but in the past with all the presidents. Does that mean that you have written about them and how they benefit out of it? I mean, you know many names of many people, and it's not my job to mention who those people are, that have relationships with the presidency, with the vice presidency, with the government. But I'm not here to dictate that to anyone. They gain benefit. We all know about it. But we do nothing and say nothing. And neither does Amma Bugani. They choose which articles to write. They choose the century, what to write about Africans, oppression in Africa, the loss of lives, people that are, and I'm not saying they're wrong in all of those cases, because that's not my view, but I do think that they're not doing a good enough job to understand if they talk about these atrocities of, and crimes against humankind. Why have they not written about Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, Palestine, all of those issues? Why? We need to look at who's funding them once again. And that's why I keep on saying it's important for us to take a step back and look at who finances these operations and what those narratives are.